So John, today has been filled with a lot of very interesting demos that I find very exciting, but something you mentioned early on in the day is kind of Qualcomm's approach to 5G beyond data. Can you just elaborate on, on what you meant by that? Yeah, when I look at 5G beyond data, it's this fact that we've made sure 5G was amazing for data. So whether it's millimeter wave, sub six, higher data rate gigabits per second, or super low latencies, it's also this fact that 5G itself can offer services beyond data. So we're designing 5G as an example for positioning. So to make sure you can have accurate positioning in a 5G network, whether that's for industrial, whether it's for automotive, or even for the metaverse and XR. And another example is how do we look at edge services? So if we look at the evolution of compute and the fact that compute is moving not only into the device, but also the role of the edge cloud. So as 5G continues to evolve, the way in which 5G interplays with connectivity and compute will also continue to evolve. So how are you thinking about the relationship between 5G advanced and 6G? So when we look at 5G advanced, we really look at getting the most value out of evolving 5G, adding to that framework that's already there. A good example of that is pushing 5G harder in areas like machine learning, bringing AI and machine learning into the data processing on the device side, on the network side, and how the air interface involves. Or looking at new groundbreaking technologies for full duplex, or taking 5G into new applications like augmented and virtual reality. So there's a lot of work going into 5G advanced and those technology capabilities that we're designing, we're also looking at bringing those more fundamentally into a new air interface in longer term. So I think one of the ways to differentiate the 5G advanced evolution from 6G is a little bit about timeline, with 6G being a 2030 thing and 5G still having a huge runway ahead over the next eight years. But at the same time, looking at the technology underpinnings, where's technology going to be in 2030, well, we're going to put together these ingredients in a slightly different way for that longer term evolution than we are in terms of what we're able to drive into 5G advanced. And with so many exciting things coming and so many exciting things that were shown today, I didn't want to let you leave here without telling me some of the other key takeaways that, that you're hoping people get from what we saw here today. I think one of the big takeaways is that we're continuing to drive 5G in a lot of new directions. And at the same time, there's that core improvements in 5G. So the fact that you can get even better mobility, even better battery performance, even higher data rates. So more applications into upcoming smartphones. And at the same time, we're taking 5G into new ground making directions. So think of machine learning and data. How is the network and device going to become more intelligent and how are they going to work together as part of an artificially intelligent air interface? So some of the big ideas were we're changing how we use spectrum. And so that's changing how we're going to have designs on not only in certain bands we're using today, but how are we taking 5G forward into new frequency bands? How are we using these bands in new approaches? So what excites me is this perspective of data and how the data is processed, where it's processed, how intelligent the air interface can be. And at Qualcomm, we're driving our design technologies into all of these different directions, making sure that 5G itself is getting that big boost in performance that's going to be meaningful to consumers and enterprise. Very cool, John. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.